So today we're going to tie nymphs. And we're going to start off with one of the simplest nymphs going. It's called a zebra midge. Is everybody pretty good at their whip finish? <laughs> They're experts. Experts? Yeah. All right. So we're going to put a bead on a hook. And um, uh, there's a lot of different. Some people like to take the hook, put it in their hand, put the bead on. If you look at the bead, you'll see that one side, the hole on one side is smaller and bigger on the other side. So the small hole goes over the point of your hook. So the way I'm gonna do it, um, and also these are uh, bead mats that John Schultz uh, was gonna make for everybody today, but he didn't, so. <laughs> anyway, um, so I put that down. That way if I drop my bead, which I will, it doesn't end up in the next county. So I just get the small hole, <coughs> and just drop it right over the tip. Yeah, they make some really cool um, bead pliers. Mike uh, Bowers has some. I forgot mine, but... Michael Scraft. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and tie this, and... Um, then when we get done, you guys can tie one. So if you want to just watch, I'll just whip one up. All right. So the reason this is a, a kind of an important fly to tie is because it teaches you thread control. And um, so everybody probably learned last week that thread is braided. And so the longer I wrap with it, the more I rope it up. And then if I counterclockwise spin my, my bobbin, it goes flat again. And so in this fly, we're going to try to keep our thread as flat as we can. So I'll show you what that looks like. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start my thread right behind my bead. I'm going to do a few wraps just to kind of create a little bit of a thread dam so my bead doesn't move. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and wrap down the shank. Well, I'm going to get one layer of thread on before I tie my wire in. So with my bobbin, if I spin it counterclockwise, my thread will flatten out. And I can do nice, even thread wraps. And you see I've got my waist piece pulled at a 45 degree angle. By doing that, it makes my thread wraps go in real nice and tight to the last wrap. So I've got a nice thread base now. All right, so now I'm gonna tie in my wire. So I, I don't like tying any material to a bare hook. I like to get a, a layer of thread down first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my thread back up because in order to create a body on this fly, I've gotta have a few layers. So now I've got basically got two layers of thread. I'm going to put the, the wire right into the back of the bead. I'm going to flatten my thread. I'm going to make be very mindful of keeping your thread flat. <clears throat> Is anybody here tie left-handed? Besides you? <laughs> anybody that matters. <laughs> so where you put the wire? Uh, it doesn't. All right, so my wire's tied in, and now my thread is, is down at the bottom again. I'm going to flatten out. If you're tying with real heavy wire, you probably um, would maybe want to put it right down the middle of the back. Uh, with thinner wire, I don't think it matters, and I really don't think it matters to the fish. So, All right, so now here's what we're going to do. We need to create a taper. So right now you can see that my... Um, my body of my, of my fly is, is pretty uniform all the way up. So I'm gonna flatten out my thread and I'm gonna come down three quarters of the way. Okay, so right there. Keep my thread flat. I'm gonna come all the way back to the top. Uh, 
Now I'm going to come down halfway. My thread got all fuzzy there. Come back up to the top. Now I'm going to come down a quarter. And then back to the top. So now you notice that I've got a tapered shaped body now, kind of carrot shaped. Okay, so now I need to wrap my wire. So normally, you know, when we wrap wire, we do it for two reasons. One is either to protect materials and give the fly strength, or in this case, it's just to create a rib. So if I've wrapped on, um, um, well, like on the next fly, we'll be using some pheasant tail. If I wrap my pheasant tail this way, I'm gonna wrap my wire the other way so that they cross and I give my fly some strength. On this fly, there's no way to give thread more strength, really. So I can go ahead and wrap my wire in the same direction as I wrap my thread. So the way I'm gonna wrap my wire is I'm going to, um, I'm gonna do a, um, um, just what we call a palmered wrap or a barber pole. So I'm just gonna bring it around, I'm gonna space it out. And bring it up to the top. Now I'll take my thread, tie my wire off, and I'm gonna do a few wraps right up here behind it. So I've got my wire pulled forward, my thread going behind it, I've done three, that's four wraps. And now I'm gonna do a couple of wraps in front. And then I'm going to hold my bobbin tight and just helicopter my wire. You can use your scissors if you want. Um, and if you do, use the very back of your scissors. But I like to do it that way. And then now I just need to whip finish. So I'll go ahead and take my tool. And that's a finished thread uh, zebra midge. Other things you could do to this, if you want, you could coat it with UV cement, which a lot of people do today. I don't know that that really matters, but um, that's a finished fly. So this fly can be tied in any color you can imagine. So we can tie them in black with red wire. We can tie them silver wire, gold wire, copper wire, green wire, and then we can tie the body in brown, olive, gray i mean there's there's no um there's no uh correct color pattern for this so all right so that's that what about wire sizes for zebra midges? well i use medium on this one um i like to have a little more pronounced rib but um you could use you could use uh extra small small medium it's just it's up to you so I like to have that rib pronounced a little bit more. So I use a, a little larger.